Dodgers and Mets ready to start this series. Phil Bickford warming. It's probably going to be two hitters for Vessia. It's a back and forth game in LA. You asked me to take a look at this place, so I will. First, let's see how we got there. Masnido. Vessia's 2 1 offering is cued left side. That's a swinging bunt. Muncie won't even attempt to throw. It's a little bit surprising. Vessia's going to have a chance here to face Marte with Phil Bickford ready. 2 1. Pulled the left base at Marte. Roberts pops out of the dugout. He's got the right hander Bickford ready in the bullpen and he'll make the pitching change here. Mets are poised to try and tie or retake the lead. And he snuck in just in time. Bickford's first pitch is a strike. Call a balk. A balk on Bickford and the game is tied. So as Ripperger explains it to everyone on the Dodgers, let's look at it again. First question, is this set or wind up position? Sometimes I have to slow down to make sure I have it right too. This is set position. He's working out of the stretch to get the signs and then he'll bring his hands together to complete the set. Okay, so watch what he does now. See if you can figure out why it's a balk. After eight seconds. To be honest, I'm a little confused by that guy calling traveling, but let's re-rack it and do it again. Does the name Carter Caps mean anything to you? Caps used to pitch with that crow hop move. MLB outlawed that, making it illegal to take a second step to hard home plate with either foot, not just pivot, so that the reset there is considered a second step. That's illegal. You could theoretically balk this if you want under 602A naturally associated motion, but now it's explicitly spelled out in 507 as the Carter Caps rule. Oh, he moved his front leg. Yeah. Started his delivery. Yep. He re repositioned his front leg right there. And so before Bickford even throws a pitch, time run scores. Oh, he's moved. He said, and then he moved his front foot. Crew chief is Dan Bellino. He's the second base umpire, and he has not come in to join the conversation. Allowing Ripperger to deal with this on his own. I think Dave might want to get wrong. Sometimes you do to lay a fire under your club. This is Phil Bickford's 125th game in the major leagues and the first balk that he's been called for, but it was the right call. It looks like it was the right call. Quick mechanics talk. A balk is a live ball in pro, dead in high school, so it's a little rules difference. Pro's live. Rip points but keeps play alive. Then after the catcher catches the no pitch, calls the balk and enforces the penalty. You can actually call time here too because it's a dead ball. You keep it live during the no pitch itself because the batter could theoretically hit a home run then becomes a pitch and you ignore the balk. But because the batter didn't do anything here, instead of calling ball strike, you just call a balk and it becomes no pitch and the runners get to advance. I like the explanation given to the offended team on the mound and I like Ripperger takes the manager, Bellino takes the pitcher, and then when Rip is still talking to Roberts, Bellino hangs back. There's no need to interject and do a two-on-one thing. There was no ejection, no need to get him away, because Roberts isn't doing anything ejection worthy. You're just having a discussion. So I like the game management here. Continuing the inning. No pitch, and this is the first one to Lindor, and it's grounded to first, and the Mets, just like that, have the lead. Look out, scorches one through, and it's 8-6 Mets. Bouncing ball to first, Alonzo's got it, and the Mets take the opener in a back-and-forth affair, 8-6.